Hey everybody, I'm Jason Bowe with The Telegraph. I'm Jordan Hill, the uh, Ledger Inquirer. And we're here to talk about Georgia at SEC Media Days. Full disclosure, this video should have happened Tuesday. You know, in a perfect world. In a perfect <laughs> world. However, a battle with food poisoning, that started at 5 in the morning by yours truly, prevented that from happening, did all I could, and went right to bed, got fluids, all that stuff. I will spare you the details. You know, I mean, just, you know, you talk about uh, playing hurt. I mean, you, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, I'll tell you what, that MJ flu game is much a lot more, of more and more impressive. <laughs> Granted, uh, you know, uh, he, he did get the IV. I needed, I needed an IV yeah. bag. Uh, yesterday, but hey, we're here now. All's well, and uh, Georgia. So, so I'll tell you what, Kirby Smart from year one to year two uh, at SEC Media Days, uh, much more relaxed up there. Yeah. And uh, it, it seemed like you know he'd been around the block. You know, last year he, he kind of came across as I don't want to say stiff, but definitely a, a little uncomfortable. Um, he kind of did the filibuster last year. This year, he had he had the flow going. He was confident. He saying all the right things. Was bragging on his running backs that were there. Uh, compared Roquan Smith to C.J. Mosley. How impressed are you with Kirby Smart's demeanor and disposition as a head coach at this stage compared to last season? I think it's pretty clear that he's really coming into his own. And I mean, you know, it's something you should just expect. I mean, I think it's something that you know we kind of take for granted. But anytime you do a job compare, you know, your first few weeks and then come back a year later, then hey, you know, it's probably going to look like a totally different person. I think he felt a lot more comfortable here, especially with the guys that he had here. You know, I think he's really gotten to know these guys. He understands and really respects these guys. So, you know, when he was coming in last year, he's still trying to learn the people that are here, you know, and, and you know, it might have came off a little bit more like lip service then, but, but I feel like, you know, he really knows uh, the guys that he had here and he's really passionate about what they're going to do. Absolutely. And let's talk about the guys he did bring. Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle. Uh, Nick Chubb, 1,100 yards a year ago. Sony Michelle, over 800. Um, offensive line needs to improve, and that was the focal point when talking to the backs about the run game. Uh, the offensive line through the first eight games last year really let them down. You look at that Nichols game. Uh, what, did they have 100? Hundred un, under two hundred under two hundred rushing yards for sure against an FCS against an FCS opponent a, a, an average a, maybe below average FCS opponent they were better than the year before when they were at the bottom of the lower Division One uh, region but uh, they've got they, they should have more size on the offensive line and both uh, Nick Chubb and Sonny Michelle were talking about how Andrew Thomas and Isaiah Wilson two freshmen that are at, on campus now how 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 improved those two guys could make the line. And that kind of surprised me because uh, I think a lot of us figured Isaiah Wilson would uh, compete for that right tackle spot. But Andrew Thomas, where exactly could Andrew Thomas fit in if he's able to end up at, with a starting spot? Would they transition him into guard early on? I mean, you have Isaiah Wynn. I think Isaiah Wynn's your left tackle. Uh, he's your best overall lineman. And uh, last year they weren't able to, to put him out there because of some interior problems. But you look at the interior, and Pat Allen, Lamont Gilliard, Solomon Kinley, that seems like a formidable trio down there. So um, it's interesting to see if Andrew Thomas could, could work his way into maybe an interior uh, position. But uh, I have to say that uh, with, 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 the line, with the line's additions, with a year in Sam Pittman's system, I think that this line should be much more improved than it was a year ago. You know, when you bring guys like uh, Sony and Nick here, you know, that's the, that's what the cameras want to see. And you know, kind of for us, I'd kind of rather talk to some of those offensive linemen. Let's hear yeah. what they're saying because, you know, we've seen that Sony and Nick, they've proven themselves over and over. And, and like you hit on, you know, if they can figure out that offensive line, I think that there's enough pieces in there, how they're going to set them up, I don't know, you know, for sure. But I think they can figure it out. But the sooner they do it, I'm sure the better, you know, for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. On the defensive side of the ball, Roquan Smith came. I think at first that seemed like a bit of a surprise uh, that, that uh, Lorenzo Carter, Davin Bellamy, or Dominic Sanders uh, were not brought down. But Roquan makes a ton of sense when you think back on all the things that Kirby Smart has said about Roquan. I don't think he's ever had one negative thing to say about the guy. Always uh, praises him for the high motor he has during practice. Always praises him uh, for his performance in games. He was Georgia's leading tackler a year ago. Uh, the, guy's a, the guy's a machine. He's your new age linebacker, sideline to sideline. Uh, when you got to go against these spread offenses, especially with all those those groups that they got to face in the SEC East year in and year out. 
So uh, what do you think this defense's ceiling is, Jordan? Because you're, you're looking at a group that Roquan Smith is going to be one of its leaders. They return 10 starters. There's so much talent is back, and they actually have depth at some of those positions, especially on the defensive line, to where – to where it, it, it sure seems that this could be one of the top defensive units in the conference. You know, I need to use some coach speak, but I hear it all the time. So the sky's the limit, it seems like, with this oh, defense. God. I know, I know. But, uh, you know, Roquan Smith, like you said, a guy that's all over the place. And, um, you know, really all the linebackers all together. Lorenzo Carter, Davin Bellamy. You know, we talked about it in another video. But, uh, you know, Dominic Sanders back there at safety, we think that he's going to make a surge back after kind of down here. I think the defense has set themselves up well, and you know it's just a matter of you know as long as you know they get Trent Thompson back, you know he's coming off that shoulder surgery. You know, if he comes back 100%, if he comes back like he did in that ball game where he was just putting up video game stats yeah. against that TCU offensive line, you know to me there's really you know no obvious weak point, uh, that, you know, and then it just comes down to staying healthy. And, and that's crazy to think that we got this far in a Georgia video and just mentioned Trent Thompson. Exactly. He, might, he might be their top, maybe their second overall player on this team behind uh, behind Nick Chubb. Yeah. Um, you could even make an argument he could be better. I mean, I'm not. That's not my belief. Just saying the argument exists. Um, but that's it for Georgia and in their time at SEC Media Days. Uh, I'm Jason Butt with the Telegraph. He's Jordan Hill with the Ledger Inquirer. Thanks for watching.